I know that there is a the problem exists in this world that if you have something of real value, how are you really going to get it out to the public so that the public can benefit from it? And uh, how are you going to be able to get past all of the uh, so-called important people who didn't find what you found? And they're going to make you look like a fool and so that you'll just shut up. So that's the problem that I've come across in religion and all the different subjects I've been talking about. I get nothing but uh, condemnation from uh, from. Uh, religions from people who consider themselves to be authorities on everything. I always say I'm not an authority on anything. I'm just an ordinary man pursuing extraordinary knowledge. I'm not stupid. I'm not a PhD. I don't have any of those letters about, uh, in front of my name or after my name. I don't. I don't claim to be a world's foremost authority. I'm just an ordinary human. But. I'm not stupid. When I find something that I know is of extraordinary significance and importance, my first thought is to share it with my friends and with, and with the people who want to know. I think that's a normal human quality, that if you really care about your friends and care about your family and ultimately from that care about your community and ultimately care about your country, if you really care and you find something of extreme value, you want to share it. I mean, I grew up hearing that, you know, if you're going to be going somewhere on vacation or, or, or going to some amusement park or something, you want to go with friends to share the, the, the experience with good friends. You want to share with other people. And so that's the way I feel. I just want to share with other people something that I have found that I know, I don't suspect, think, or wish, but that I know is of extraordinary value. Why? Because I have watched it over a period of time. I have experienced it over and over and over again. And every time I am amazed at how important the thing that I have found is. <clears throat> now I have to try and talk to people who, you know, who have no idea who I am and what I'm doing and what I'm talking about and the importance of it. So how do you tell people when you found something important? And, uh, and you know, so and especially if, you, if you're a doctor and you've been working on, and this is, I think, is a very good analogy. If you've been working on some kind of a disease, some sort of a of a rare but but deadly disease, and you found the cure. Uh, first of all, you know, if a doctor who was highly highly uh, uh, placed uh, doctor in this country goes on a vacation to say uh, uh, some foreign country to some uh, country in the South Seas or whatever, and he sees that the people there are all dying of a disease. Uh, and being a doctor, highly intelligent, well, uh, well uh, placed doctor, when he sees the symptoms of the people, he knows exactly what the problem is. But these people are living in a jungle. They're living in a you know in a very uh, um, rare existence in a jungle setting. They don't have the background and the the knowledge that that doctor does. But then on the other hand, he's in a place where people are not going to listen to him. He's not from that area. He's not, you know, they don't know who he is. They don't know about his credentials. And so he's trying to explain to the heads of the tribe what these people are dying from. It's very obvious to him. All they need to do is get a shot with this, this, or that, or take this pill. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a disease that he understands well. But they don't understand it, and they're not going to listen to him anyway. They don't know who he is, and they couldn't care less. So how does he explain to these people who are dying of a disease that he has the answer for them? Because he's not one of them. He doesn't look like them. He doesn't talk like them. He has a difference in, in the way he, his language is not understood by them. 
so how does he save the people? How does he do something to help these people who are dying? Well, that's the same problem I'm talking about before. I have found something that I know. Again, I don't think I suspect I know is of profound significance. But uh, how, do you, how do you tell other people? How do you convince other people of what you have found and have them at least try it to see if I found something or didn't? So that's the way I feel about the subject of astrotheology. It's extraordinarily important stuff that uh, so many people have never heard of before. Now, I, I also uh, have, have many years ago made a discovery uh, that someone uh, showed me that there is a world of difference, which I didn't know. But they showed me that there was a world of difference between astrology and, uh, and I don't know exactly what to call it. But it's like astrology in that uh, it's an ability to read uh, in the stars, in the constellations, in the heavens, the ancient peoples. I mean, my God, how many, how many uh, videos and movies have we watched on Discovery Channel, on History Channel, on all the networks about the Aztecs, the Mayas, and the Incas, and all the ancient wisdom and knowledge that the Egyptians and the Hindus and, and all the Babylonians and the Sumerians and all the ancient cultures of the world, they were brilliant on building pyramids and they knew about this, they knew about that, uh, and all of this wonderful, strange, uh, extraordinary knowledge that was known by these ancient and prehistoric cultures and we think, my God, how did these Egyptians build this? And how did they build the pyramids? And where did these people get this? I, you know, all the knowledge that they had. <clears throat> well, so I boil it all down to the fact that uh, astrology has become a very, uh, uh, you know, it's something to be put down in public. It's, it's nonsense. The reason why you need to know why astrology has such a bad name. The most important reason, and there's more than one reason, but the most important reason is that for a thousand years, the Catholic Church in the Vatican has dominated, well, 2,000 years, the, the Christianity has dominated Europe. <clears throat> and since uh, about the fourth century, the Vatican has dominated Christianity, and Christianity has dominated Europe, and Europe has dominated the world. So the people in power over this incredible system of religious, political, governmental, religious system that has dominated the earth for 2,000 years, these are very powerful people. We are talking about the papacy. We're talking about the pope, kings and rulers and princes of, of European nations and European countries. And those countries have dominated Europe and, those, and Europe has dominated the world. So there has been a concerted effort, obviously, by powerful people in very high places of power in Europe and unfortunately in America also, who are not interested in letting you know anything of any importance. You know, I've always said that a really important information is on a need-to-know basis. And you don't need to know. Now, again, George Kerlin, it's a big club and you ain't in it. So therefore, whatever is really important, you will never know. No one's going to tell you anything. And if they do tell you, they're going to get hurt. So you don't tell, you know, you don't tell the people of the street, you don't tell the common man what you're doing. If you're a scientist working at NASA, if you're a physicist working for the government and you're doing something with the government nobody is supposed to know, it's not going to be out on radio. It's not going to be on television. The really important stuff you are not going to be privy to hear, period. And the problem is in America, if somebody does know something and trying to tell you in the public, trying to wake you up, that can be very dangerous. 
very dangerous to talk about things that the public is not supposed to know about. So again, I'm just I'm just going around the whole story of bringing it together in one place. That if you have something important of real and legitimate importance, it's going to be very difficult to get it out into the public and have people believe and understand it and see it and take advantage of it. So that's the way I feel about something that I came across a long time ago that, um, I, as I was, was saying, that I had someone explain to me that there was a world of difference, night and day, world of difference between astrology, which has a bad name because the church doesn't want you to know that the whole of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam is based on astrology. Islam, Judaism, and Christianity are astrological religions based on astrology. Read it. You don't have to be a, a, an astronaut. You don't have to be a brain surgeon. Go and read where these religions have come from. And you will see that all three are based on astrology. So I'm saying that astrology itself is a profoundly interesting and important subject. <clears throat> but there's a world of difference between common, what we call uh, astrology, and a, and a legitimate study of how the constellations, the stars, the planets affect us on the earth. And the man who was most famous for getting the closest to that hidden truth was a man named uh, Nostradamus. Nostradamus, over 500 years ago, lived over 500 years ago, and yet even today, 500 years later, his name is still respected. There's still a mystique and a mystical importance to the name Nostradamus. Why? Because he did so many, he, he had so many uh, prophecies that he prophesied that came to, came to pass exactly the way he said they would. So, you know, you can complain all you want and say that astrology is a bunch of bull. That's what the, uh, the paid lackeys who have their, quote, degrees from a university who, uh, who uh, are not interested in you knowing anything, they will tell you like adults tell children, go out and play, go out and play ball. The adults want to talk in private, so you go out and play a ball, uh, play ball and get out of our way. We important adults, we want to talk about something, we don't want you to hear it. So go play ball. Well, I learned a long time ago I'm not interested in playing ball I'm not a team player I always wanted to know what are you adults talking about while we're out playing ball I'm not stupid and so I've learned now that uh, the people who are in power do not want you to know that there are certain things that they have known for a long time and they're not telling you 